May the grace and the peace of Jesus be in every heart. What a privilege to be together in this evangelism seminar, in this special conference. Thanks to our God for giving us this opportunity to talk of a matter so solemn and so sublime, and at the same time so serious, which is the mission of the church. We all receive responsibilities. Since we were born and start to grow, we receive responsibilities of different size and angle, but we start to receive responsibilities. We have responsibilities at work, we have responsibilities in our families, we have responsibilities at church, we all receive responsibilities. In all the words, we receive missions. So you have the mission to pay your bills, you have the mission to study, you have the mission to take care of your family, and to give her welfare as well, you have the greatest mission, which is to preach the words of God, to preach the gospel to all the world as a testimony to all nations. The mission of the church is to bring the word of God to the world perishing in its sins. When Jesus leave the Judaism and continue the great reform in the Christian church who were called the followers of the way, this was the name of the church. Jesus then had to prepare persons to continue the evangelical work. And now our Lord Jesus Christ offers a big challenge. We can found in Matthew 4 verse 19. And he said unto them, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Now Jesus says to these men, Leave everything you are doing. Some were fishers, others tax collectors, public workers, but most of them were from the low classes of the society. But they accept the challenge to quit their job, to dedicate themselves a hundred percent to the great mission of preaching the gospel. Jesus said, follow me. In all the words, come, accompany me, and you will be fishers of men. Dear brothers, the Bible says that they left their nets to follow him. They left everything for Jesus. Everything to learn to preach. They didn't know how to preach. Before they unite to the church of the way, which was the Christian church, the Jewish church that was the previous church were so focused into rites and ceremonies and traditions, much of them created by men, and they were not preaching the gospel. And now they start to learn. Jesus taught them how to preach the gospel. The ways, the strategies they had to use to be successful in the great mission of bringing the world to millions of souls that were perishing. And now, God organized his church 
God gave her the name of church that comes from the Greek Ecclesia, which means church. This name hasn't been given by a man, nor invented by man. This name has been given by God, by Jesus. The one who established the church is Jesus. I'm so sad when I hear some people saying, God doesn't need a church. I'm going to serve God in my house. This thinking is totally in opposition to the apostolic faith. The faith of the fathers of the church and of the primitive Christians of the first centuries. The mission is preach the gospel. Acts of the Apostle, page 9 says, The church is God's appointing agency for the salvation of men. It was organized for service and its mission is to carry the gospel to the world. From the beginning it has been God's plan that through his church shall be reflected to the world his fullness and his sufficiency. The members of the church, those whom he has called out of darkness into his marvelous light, are to show forth his glory. Here it says that the church is God's appointed agency for the salvation of men. All of those who need to go to heaven wants to pass by the church. The church is the way created by God to contribute to feed us spiritually to have strength to face the enemy of our souls. The spirit of prophecy says that she has been organized to serve. The mission of the church of God in every moment is to serve, not to be served, to serve, to serve the suffering humanity, to serve those who are in troubles, to serve the needing poor to serve those who are in need of their Savior. This is a mission of the church. The mission of the church is only one, to serve. When Jesus was training his disciples, who were the ministers, the leaders of the church for the preaching mission, Jesus now gave a mission. And a mission not so easy. What is the mission given by Jesus? Let's see. Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. My beloved ones, what was the great mission of Jesus? To make disciples. I have a question for you. To preach the gospel, is it an easy job? What do you think? If you answered, no, you were right. If preach the gospel was so easy, Jesus would have come back already and the mission would have been completed. But preach the gospel is a mission that requires faith, courage, motivation, and in first place, an experience with the Lord. And we need to prepare others. The new members of the church need to be prepared to bring others to the church. This is make disciple. 
I remember in a country, a pastor, hard worker, a very hard worker man, a man that had patience for the souls, he was a fisher of men. But he made a big mistake. He didn't prepare anybody to continue his work. He did not entrust the responsibility to preaching the gospel to others. He thought that him alone and only him was able to do it. And when he turned old and he could not continue preaching the great news of the eternal gospel, this country stayed without leader to continue the work and needed foreign aid. We need to prepare others to preach the gospel. It's not God's plan that a person stay his lifelong leading the same church sector. Changes are necessary. Diversity talents as said by the Apostle Paul. We need to prepare others. With the word disciple means student. And we need to make all the students to continue the mission of preaching the gospel. The Apostle Paul felt the burden of the mission. Let's look at what he wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Although I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yeah, who isn't to me if I preach not the gospel? The Apostle Paul felt the burden of the responsibility. Dear brothers, dear sisters, my dear friends, realize a mission is a burden that is on the shoulder of everybody. It's a burden that is on the church. The Apostle Paul says, yeah, who is into me if I preach not the gospel? I have this obligation. It doesn't mean that God high people and fold them to preach. But to those who accept his calling, to those who accept his invitation, to be part of the kingdom of God, it is a duty to preach the message of the gospel. And who is into me? Who is into you? If we do not accomplish the mission of the master, which is to preach his word. This must be present in our mind. This has to take us out of the spiritual lethargy. This must awake our lives for the time we are living in. Every day, millions of people are dying without God, without peace, without hope. And what will I do? And what will you do to rescue these souls? that Jesus rescues them, but we are the instruments of Jesus to help these soul to leave the pit. The Desire of Ages 1.95 says, every true disciple is born into the kingdom of God as a missionary. He who drinks of the living water becomes a fountain of life. The receiver becomes a giver. The grace of Christ in the soul is like a spring in the desert, welling up to refresh all and making those who are ready to perish eager to drink of the water of life. Dear brothers, 
Here, what does it say? That every true disciple is born into the kingdom of God as what? Answer. As a missionary. It is an automatic thing. From the moment you get baptized in the church, here it says that you shall be missionary. God doesn't want inactive members. Members that are just in the book of the church. God wants active people who give their lives as says in the inspiration, I will gladly spend and be spent for the work of God. Here says that we have to be givers of grace like we have been blessed with the great truth of salvation. We need to share it with others. In social media, there is the sharing button. This is what we need to do, to share the word of God. Dear brothers, we are living in the last days of this world history. A world full of violence, death, sin, immorality and degradation. And now God has a last message to give to the world. The final message that the remnant church need to preach. And what is this message? It is written in Revelation chapter 18 verse 1. And it says, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Amen, my brothers. He refined the message of God's remnant people. The angel of Revelation 18, that we believe will be the Seventh-day Adventist Reform Movement Church, and this church has a great and solemn responsibility. There is a big burden on her shoulders to light the world with the glory of God. Here it says that the earth has been lightened by the glory of the present truth. The last warning message to the world that is perishing in its sins. And I ask to you, what did you do to give this last warning message? Here it says that the earth has been lightened with his glory. With the glory of God, with the glory of the truth. We need to light the world to reach, to raise our flag in new places, in new countries, in new continents. But the question is, who will go to preach the gospel? Dear brothers, the inspiration continues saying, It is with an earnest longing that I look forward to the time when the events of the day of Pentecost shall be repeated with even greater power than on that occasion. John says, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Then, as at the Pentecostal season, the people will hear the truth spoken to them, every man in his own tongue. My beloved ones, like in the Pentecostal season, when the church fulfilled her mission, where almost 3,000, almost 5,000 people got converted to Jesus in just one day, the power will not be different when in the latter rain, 
The Holy Spirit will be given with great power and glory to the remnant church. But God can give His power to an unmissionary person, to a person that doesn't preach the gospel, to a naturified believer who just go to the services of the church, to the meetings, but who is not a living preacher. We need to awake from our spiritual nightmares. We need to awake from our sleepiness. We need to preach. To preach with our actions, with our words, and to open the Bible to show them that God has a better way. God has sincere children in all religions. The Word of God says in John chapter 10, verse 16, And all the sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and they shall be one fold and one shepherd. What says the Word of God? That these sheep will hear my voice. Many souls have heard the voice of God. Souls that are in the wrong fold, in the wrong churches, they are hearing the truth and taking decisions, taking positions. But there's still many people to be saved, many people to be conquered, to be restored, to be achieved. And when the Holy Spirit will be fully given, these sheep will hear the voice of the true shepherd. And they will unite to the remnant people of God. There are some people saying that in the last days, God will have no more church. What a lie. Where is it written in the Bible? The organized church of God will go till the end. Maybe meeting in the caves of the rocks. Maybe in the catacombs, maybe under the trees, but the organized church of God will continue. Many souls will hear the voice of the true shepherd. The servant of the Lord when the Adventist church has been founded in the 19th century, she saw a problem. What was the problem? Evangelism, page 381. As I traveled through the south on my way to the conference, I saw city after city that was unworked. What is the matter? The ministers are hovering over churches which know the truth while thousands are perishing out of Christ. What saw the servant of the Lord? That the mission workers, the pastors, hovering over churches, visiting one church and another one, and hovering churches, while thousands are dying without who? Without Jesus. The mission of the church is to shine the world. But often, the churches are turning dependent of the ministerial aid. 
Some churches are atrophying. The church needs the ministerial aid, but she can't be dependent of the ministerial aid. The believers has to be firm in the faith, says the inspiration. The members has to be leaders. We can't be dependent believers. We have to be believers that accomplish with the mission of bringing this so precious jewel, which is the message of the gospel. The Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 2 says, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering and doctrine. Paul's message to Timothy is, Preach the word. The message to the church is, Preach the word. The message to the leaders is, Preach the word. The message to the members of the church is, Preach the word. A tempo e fora de and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exalt with all long suffering and doctrine. This is a mission. The mission of opening new horizon, new fields, new territories. Jesus will come back with us. But what are we doing to speed up the coming of Jesus? When the Holy Spirit has been given with great power and great glory during the Pentecostal season, the Bible says that the church wasn't an atrophied church. She was a progressing church. She was a growing church. Let's read what says Acts 16, verse 5. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. There are some people with really great intention that are working against the progression of the church. Look, we are a little church. And we don't need to grow. It is true that we are a leader church. This is a prophetic fact. But it is not because we are a leader church that we are not going to grow. The primitive church, the church founded by Jesus that we call the Christian church, that were known as the followers of the way, it was a little church, but it was a growing church. Constantly new souls were entering in this church. The Bible says that the churches were established in the faith and increasing in number daily. This growth has to be in quality and in number. We are not saying that we should baptize unprepared people without having an experience with Jesus, without being convinced of the truth. But here it says that we need to have the power of the Holy Spirit to grow. To grow in grace, to grow in knowledge, to grow in spirituality, and to grow as well in number. The spirit of prophecy says, new fields of work must be opened. Tools are to be added to the faith. New names will appear on the church records. Names that will appear in the immortal records in heaven. Oh, that we might realize what might be done with the money expended for the gratification of self. Here it says that the church has to reach new territories. 
The church has to raise her flag in new places. But it's easier for us to stay like this. Arms crossed doing what says the Bible, my Lord delayeth his coming. Meus amados, my beloved ones, o que você tem feito what did you do so that the gospel message may reach new territories? Nós precisamos We lutar need to fight com todas as forças with all our strength para que nós so that we might be light bearers to all of those that still doesn't know the present truth. Matthew 24 verse 14 says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness into all nations, and then shall the end come. Here it says that the gospel has to reach all the world. Jesus can't come back if there's a tribe over there in Africa that still didn't hear the message of the present truth. If there's someone over there in the Falkland Islands that still didn't hear the present truth. The gospel has to reach places where they still didn't hear the gospel message. My desire for us today is that as a church, we might accomplish with the mission. And what is the mission? To preach the gospel to all the world, as a testimony to all nations, so that Jesus might come back. And so that we might say, please come, Lord Jesus. This is my desire and my prayer to all of us. Amen.